We got the, the information on the developer preview for O. A little bit of insight into what to expect, at least with the developer preview. Um, there's going to be some improvements to notifications. For the most part, there's like notification groups. So you can take all of your your tech, your news notifications, for example, from different news apps that you have installed, put them into their own channel. I think they're calling it notification channels so that you can group them together and manage them as a group instead of individually with the whole idea being that you're kind of cleaning up your notifications so it's not filled with a bunch of information. You kind of collapse it down into uh, kind of categories that you determine. That could be handy, I suppose. There's also um, There's also kind of like time management around notifications so you can snooze things to later if i wanted to uh manage my notifications the same way that i manage uh google inbox emails for example so like you get an in inbox email and within the app you can either swipe it one way to you know delay it or archive it or whatever it's kind of making notifications a little bit more uh like that and i don't as know as part of inbox not as part of Inbox. No, I'm just using Inbox as an example. Just, just fitting Inbox into, right, right, right. Yeah, I mean, this is literally taking your notifications and applying kind of like being able to snooze a notification later. Because personally, I use my notifications as a to-do list many times, which means I always have these notifications hanging out up there because I don't want to swipe them away <laughs> because I want to do that a little bit later. And if I swipe it right. away, I might forget because I know myself far too well and I will forget. <laughs> Uh, so this is like, this is a feature that I'm super, you know, uh, very much so looking forward to, um, better kind of built in autofill for things like password managers. So if you use LastPass, uh, one password, uh, you know, a bunch of different password managers right now, there's good, there's okay integration into Android where it's kind of hacking into the accessibility features to allow for, you know, drawing over the top of other apps to insert your passwords into the places that they need to go but in in essence it's kind of a hacky way to do it and i'm amazed that we were able to do it up until now well with android O, they're going to kind of build that into the os in an official way so that it can be done securely and it won't be kind of a hack job the way it is kind of right now uh let's see here what else lock screen shortcuts so you know on the let's see i don't know well, yeah, I don't think I'm showing anything off. But you know that on, on the, the, the down in the corners, you have those little shortcuts. You can assign those to whatever you want. So instead of it being a camera shortcut on your lock screen, you could assign it to any app or a bunch of actions, that sort of stuff. Um, let's see here. What else? Background management of apps, which I think is actually a, probably a really good thing for, for battery. It's something that iOS does really well, right? Like... Android is really good for um, for allowing you to multitask and everything because the, the the OS is very wide open as far as allowing apps and developers to have access to the full phone even when it's not in the foreground and everything like that. Well, what happens? You know, some some apps go rogue and they kind of take over the process in the background, and in turn, your battery performance takes a hit, performance of the device takes a hit. Whereas on iOS, it's really kind of like more or less it's a single you know, there's a single app in focus and everything else in the background is really limited and that ends up improving the performance of your device. And it sounds like with Android O, we're going to get a little bit more of that. It's going to go deeper um, in controlling what's going on in the background. That's yeah. good. I mean, I, I had that problem when I, you know, I'm in the UK at the moment and um, before I got a, a local SIM, um, I was on the um, T-Mobile roaming thing, which is throttle to 2G. And that was a great way for all my background apps to just sit there and spin and then die and crash. Mm -hmm. So my phone would just sit there and lock up for random amounts of time. So that was that was definitely education on why we need that. Yeah. I mean, always, always looking for better uh, battery and performance with Android. And it seems like the last two or three major versions, they've really kind of, they continue to roll out improvements that are hopefully extending our battery. I think a lot of the Doze improvements from N and Marshmallow and, and Nougat have really helped. I mean, they've helped uh, tremendously yeah. as far as I can tell. Um, so yeah, managing the background stuff is even better. Oh, it's so strange that, well, as Kevin said, when I am abroad and it's roaming, that hurts. Um, yeah. And then if I if I ever leave Waze on, I'm dead. If yeah. you leave Waze <laughs> on, okay. 
because yeah, it's just churning, and that's probably yeah, that's probably oh, using up a lot of resources in the background. But then every every once in a while there'll be a day where suddenly I look at it and it's eleven percent, and I don't know, and, and, and it just says Android system running, and I don't know why <laughs> it dies. It's very rare, but it does happen occasionally. Yeah. Well, that was the weird thing I found was that when I got my um, you know, so I got my new Pixel XL, so my old Nexus Six, I just left on the on the side, and it kept running for five days because I wasn't touching it. So <laughs> it clearly, it still is mostly the screen that that is and me interacting with it chews things up, not just background stuff. But. Yeah, well, I mean, and, and it, it was lonely. Yeah, it's not even just screen, right? <laughs> like you know, with Doze, if it's just sitting on a counter, Android is smart enough to to realize that it's not moving around, so it's not in a pocket, so it doesn't need to be kind of ready to do anything and so it really kind of limits things down and yeah that's just one of the ways where doze has really and you know and those yeah, battery that, that was, i was really actually really helped. impressed that it lasted that long yeah. yeah oh totally um i've seen that with tablets too it used to be because i don't hardly ever use tablets anymore but i'll charge it up and then i'll forget about it set <laughs> it down and i'll go back to it a week two weeks later sometimes and i mean it used to be that it didn't matter what you did that tablet even though it was just sitting there wasn't going to last more than a couple of days it just it just it wasn't smart enough to to maneuver that, and now they can last many days before. But but I will add, not nearly as long as the iPad that I have had at the house. That one time I charged it fully, used it, set it down, completely forgot about it for almost a month. Went back <laughs> to it, totally still on, totally had battery power. I was like, wow, that's wow. that's awesome. <laughs> I mean, you could literally forget it about is. it for a month and it's still powered up, which is crazy. Wow, that's that. Kindle-esque, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, we're getting there. Um, you know, a number of API changes, of course, for developers that'll make them happy. Picture-in-picture -picture mode. I mean, all in all, like, I'm still really deciding, I don't know, based on what I've told you, and, and there's some, you know, kind of like uh, UI enhancements with settings pane and stuff like that, but really no truly, like, Oh my God! I gotta have that thing right there. This is the reason to have Android O that that you could put on a commercial, and someone would be like, "That's a cool new thing. I have to have that new version." Anything? I mean, anything that I've even read out that that jumps out at you and strikes you like that? Nope. Nope. <laughs> nope. You think they're hiding stuff back until until uh, I/O? They usually do to some degree. I mean, we we definitely learned more about Nougat or Android N at the time at I/O than we did in the developer preview that they um, unleashed right. like a couple of months prior. They got to hold on to some secrets, right? They can't let it all. And, yeah. and also things that aren't working as well right now, like it's a developer preview. This is literally earlier access than they normally do to just get developers kind of get their minds going as far as how they're going to build their apps. Are you using it? And all that. I'm not yet, actually. Like I said, I was out... Um, on vacation last week, I only got back Monday evening, and I have, and I've been super slammed this week, so I haven't had a chance to install it. I don't know if I'm going to put it on uh, the Pixel. I have the Pixel C in the other room that I think I'm going to install it on first to just like play around with it. And maybe once it's oh, more stable, man. then I'll uh, then I'll live with it on the Pixel or on the Google Pixel phone. But, and that's where you really start to see a lot of those little changes and everything, kind of firsthand, you know. It's one thing to yeah. read about the features. It's another thing to like live with it. And and in a couple of days, you quickly realize the things that are cool about it and maybe the things that need to be uh, fixed before the next developer preview.